we're going to start by turning on game mode. And to do that, we're just going to open up our little windows, game mode. And along with game mode, we have captures and game bar. So go ahead and turn game mode on, captures. It's going to turn all this stuff off. We don't need any of that. Game bar as well, just turn that off. Another big one here is we're going to disable our startup apps. Now these are going to start up every single time your PC starts up and it just slows it down to oblivion. I would keep your Windows security on unless you have a dedicated antivirus, but anything that may be taking up space like Discord, any of these types of programs, anything with a high impact, generally you're going to want to turn off. Next up, I would like to update your drivers. I have an NVIDIA GPU. So for people like me, I have GeForce Experience. I'm going to go to your drivers and check for updates. Go ahead and update your computer. A lot of people don't really think that it'll affect their FPS that much, but try to make sure you're on the latest update. If you can upgrade to Windows 11, I don't recommend doing that. Just try to make sure you're on the latest update for your computer. The thing we're going to be doing is, is choosing our power plan. To do this, all you do is go to Windows and then type choose a power plan. If you want, all you have to do is set this to high performance and that would be good enough. But if you want to go a little extra, go into change plan settings, set these both to never. Uh, advanced power settings. Turn off your hard disk after zero, and then you can go to processor power management, minimum and maximum, and make sure these are both set to 100%, always apply and okay. Next up, we're gonna be messing with our graphics settings. In our graphics settings, go ahead and turn off hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. And here, we're gonna go ahead and add our rust.exe file. So wherever yours is located, on whatever disk you have it installed on, program files 86, to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Rust, RustClient.exe. Go ahead and right click that, or sorry, go ahead and ex go ahead and select that, add, and whenever you have it added, mine's already added, go ahead and click on it, Options, High Performance. Set it to High Performance, save, and we're good to X out of here. All right, and here's a big one, background apps. We're gonna go ahead and turn off all of our background apps and task manager that are taking up our CPU. So for me, it looks like the biggest things that are taking up my CPU that I can close are probably this Razer Synapse or, you know, some other wallpaper alive. What I have here in the background, this cool little background that I have, I can go ahead and turn all that off and that'll save me a little help. But this is more dedicated towards like programs. So if you have like Google open, if you have, uh, for me, Visual Studio Code, if you have an editing software open, any video playing in the background, music, anything like that, go ahead and turn that off because all that's just gonna do is uh, slow your computer down. Next thing we're gonna be doing is setting our launch options for Rust. Now, there's a bunch of different things you can do for this, but mainly I just wanna make sure that your CPU priority is set to high for Rust. And to edit your launch options, you're just gonna go to Rust, in your library properties and under launch options type and go ahead and save that now I would recommend doing this before you go into game but for I don't know, whatever reason I decided I wanted to go into game just go ahead and follow and kind of copy my settings so mainly under screen, we're gonna make sure our mode is on full screen. We're gonna make sure that we're using our native resolutions. So mine is 1920 by 1080. Turn off V-Sync, turn off your FPS limiter and turn both of these options off here. Graphics, I would also like kind of switch in between potato and ultra. I used to have mine on ultra. I used to think that this setting uh, didn't matter so much to the gameplay, but it actually really does. Uh, and there's really not too big of a difference in the way that it looks. So even now you can tell just swapping between these is a there's a massive lag spike and that's because I'm in game and I'm not in my um, not just like in the loading screen. So I'm going to want to put mine on potato because I want the best FPS and it honestly doesn't look that bad. Render scale go ahead and turn that up all the way. Nvidia DLSS is a good setting if it works for you but whenever I have mine up to ultra performance or max quality it makes my game look kind of choppy so I just turn it off. Shadow quality all the way down, cascades all the way down, all of these all the way down so you get to draw distance. Draw distance, you're going to want to have yours at high to maximum. And this is so you can see players at a you know high distance and it still isn't so hard on your computer. These next three, I would just turn all the way down. Anastrophic filtering and parallax mapping are going to be the two biggest FPS 
annihilators on this game. So go ahead and just turn these all the way down. Global rendering, I would just go ahead and turn that on. I think it looks good. I like it. It was a good addition to the game. Global render distance, you can turn up all the way, but if you're still having trouble on your computer and you need to turn your like you need to turn some settings down, you can turn this one down a little bit. But I like to have mine on max. I like to turn on my grass displacement because if you kill someone in a grassy field, that gun's just gonna sit right on top of the grass. It's not gonna disappear into the grass. Uh, so go ahead and turn that on. That's a complete like you decision. It's up to you. Grass shadows, turn that off. NVIDIA reflex mode, if you can, go ahead and turn it on or on plus boost. I have mine on on plus boost and it works pretty well. For my mesh quality, I usually keep mine around 50, 60 to 70%. Right now I have all of these at about 60% right now. You can completely eyeball it, but believe me, uh, it completely changes the way the game looks. And uh, if you put it too low, it might look like Roblox. Image effects, go ahead and copy my image effects here. The only thing you're gonna wanna have on here is sharpen. And if you do have anti-aliasing enabled and it works well for you, you're gonna be between FXAA probably and SMAA. Mine is on SMAA, and honestly, that looks the best for me. For experimental, go ahead and turn all of these off. Turn uh, GC.buffer up all the way. GC.buffer used to be a console command. We're gonna go through the, some of those in a moment, but uh, luckily now they actually have it into the um, into the settings menu. So go ahead and turn that up all the way if you can. If you can't, try to half that, so like 2048. And if you have an SSD, go ahead and turn on partial optimized loading. It'll make sure you get in the game quicker. Some good console commands for Rust. The first thing we're gonna be doing is gc.incrementalMilliseconds. Go ahead and swap that to one. See, mine is already on one. You're gonna have to type this stuff in every time you load in the game, unless you do some keybinds. The next thing we have here is our gc.collect. And then we have our pool.clear commands. So doing these pool.clear commands, it will, um, it will boost your FPS at the cost of the next time that you load in, it may take a little longer. So as you can see, the game for me is running quite smooth and looks quite nice. You should expect the same settings, if not a little better. If you look in the bottom left, I'm running at about 100 FPS, which is honestly really good for this game considering how unoptimized it is.